joined by Petroit Desmond Olariwaju Forbi, who is uh, the convener of the Nigerian Nexus, which is a non-profit organization aimed at bolstering the Nigerian spirit and encouraging patriotism across the country. He is a regular on the program, a social affairs commentator, and as well as a very passionate Nigerian who always lends his thoughts to developments in the news. Hello and good morning. Welcome to the program, Petroit Desmond. Good morning, good morning, Nigerian. It's good to be here. I'm bringing you an excellent greeting from the center of excellence here in Lagos State. Well, from 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 Lagos State, uh, let's uh, pick up the first story here, making rounds in the news, uh, where yesterday some hashtag and memorial protesters were sort of arrested at the Lakey toll gates, but uh, luckily enough for them, they're still released yesterday. Firstly, how would you react to the fact that four years down the line, there are still some people who still, you know, carry that burden of what uh, some Nigerian youth tried to do four years ago in 2020? Um, uh, it is important to get something very clear here. Yeah? Uh, the fact that some people who felt it is necessary to honor those who may have been reported dead uh, in the same, in 2020, while trying to protest against sacks and bad uh, policies or bad uh, behavior among the sacks. The reason why you may find some of them yesterday is just to, you know, take advantage of that day and sacks and the symbolic uh, representation of what uh, NSAC means to the Nigerian people, considering what happened at Lekki, it is not a question of whether people died. It is not a question of memorial to those who, la who died, but the symbolic effect of what took place at Lekki uh, before the 2020 uh disbandment before the federal government the military and the police disbanded the protesters because some people had started taking advantage of this protest to loot and create havoc and melt some danger to other users of the road and you know one thing you need to understand also about the answers the symbolic uh what answers symbolizes is that it did not only take place in Lagos state it took place in different other states so but because of the current reality because of the hardship in the country and because of some efforts to protest and failed effort to, of uh protests uh, the one that looks like the hand bad governance protest of August and uh, the uh, uh, rage of uh, protest of rage that took, that wanted to take place on the 1st of October. So people are looking for opportunity to protest. That is to tell you that a lot of Nigerians are still interested in protests and, and the situation of the government or the country does not in totality agree that people should protest, not because they do not want Nigerians to protest, but because of the fear not to return what happened in October 20 of 2020. So you will continue to see federal government and the, and the government of Nigeria and the security architectures of this country stand against protest not because they do not want people to protest but because they believe that we do not have the instrumentality we do not have the maturity we do not have the composure and the sense of organization to ensure that we can have a smooth a free 
and a, 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 a proper channel protest. Having said that, I want to join my thoughts with the rest of Nigerians that are aggrieved with the ongoing hardship due to some policies of the federal government to be calm. Let's be calm and let's approach the government constructively. I, for one, I am on the part of the people, but I, am, I will never support protest because we do not have what it takes to guarantee a peaceful protest in this part of the world. Well, While we may hold some grievances against the policy of the government, it is more important we put bigger the, the country, the bigger uh, picture of the country in our mind to ensure that we jealously protest the the fragile peace that we're having right now in Nigeria. Well, well uh, Petra Desmond, uh, a lot of people, I believe, would be wondering if the protesters were not violent in any way i mean it was just a, memor a memorial procession do you perhaps know what might have escalated the, the situation to the point where they were beaten and arrested and later released there is no justification whatsoever to molest and harass protesters that are not of violence but still we need to understand that uh the the people who participate in this procession in memorial of people who may have you know alleged that they died in the course of protesting against bad and uh facts in 2020 are not the total or the totality of the Nigerian people. It looks like they are hired crowd, and particularly a particular defiant citizen, Shorore, Omowale Shorore, who have contested under the umbrella of AAC, has failed so many times, and uh, he is a politician, he is an activist, and then uh, he is also an entrepreneur. So we, may, we do not really understand his interest. After his fallout from the election in 2019, he decided to create a take-it-back group, a take-it-back group that would, that the, his, his intention is that his election was rigged in 2019 and he must take it back from President Buhari. And then having seen the activities around 2019 and 2020, the government had called a strong stand against the Take It Back movement. If the protesters were not raw, were not wearing the regalia and some symbols of the AAC and the Take It Back uh, members, maybe they wouldn't have tear gas them. The reason why they tear gas them, the reason why they disbanded them, is because they are not just the, the, the normal Nigerian youth that are protesting. Majority of the people that I saw yesterday, because I was at Lekki yesterday, majority of the people I saw yesterday are members mobilized by Omowole Shoro Take It Back movement. But, but, but Petra Desmond, yes, I understand that from the videos that we have seen and pictures we have seen uh, springing up from Lagos, a lot of them were wearing the uh, symbol, symbolic yellow berets uh, that is synonymous with the AAC and as well as the Take It Back movement of Omoyele Shore, But in the place of the Nigerian police, on their part, don't you think that perhaps with the uh, notion behind the 2020 hashtag NSAS protest, which was against police brutality, coming back to yesterday where another case of brutality happened, do you not think that perhaps the Nigerian police is not uh, portraying itself in a good light and the aim of the protest that happened four years ago uh, is uh, completely defeated, seeing that this is still happening now? Uh, for the sake of uh, posterity, Nigeria is my country. I'm in Nigeria and have been following governance. I've been following leadership 
in this part of the world for quite a long time. And I understand the uh, social political or our cultural issues. You see, we cannot at this point be blaming the Nigerian police. The truth is, is the personnel, Nigerian police do not have even enough personnel to carry out professional policing. Do you know that according to the charter of policing, there is supposed to be one policeman against 10 individuals. But because of shortfall of police personnel in Nigeria, we are now using one policeman to protect up to 1,000 people, 500 people. So you may not get the best out of the Nigerian police until we have more people employed to police the country. Having said that, if you know how NSA started in 2020, it started like a small group. And because the government are still at that particular time, uh, 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 novice about what could happen or what could happen, the Nigerian government do not really understand is this a normal protest? Is this a, a, a kind of a, a rebel group? Uh, what is this group like? But because the government do not understand the potent of this group, they allow them to have their feet. And you see that they begin to mobilize and mobilize, mobilize until when the number is quite overwhelming, not just to the civil defense, but to the police, and even to the earliest uh, member of these Nigerian military that were there. You see, what I'm trying to say here is that Lagos is very, very fragile, considering its cosmopolitan nature. And you won't blame the Nigerian police to disband them at that early hour. If the Nigerian police had allowed these people to go on with this procession, it may get to a particular number of people that becomes uncontrollable, which will affect lives and properties in labor states. Why I also agree that protest is the human right of every citizen. We need to put Nigeria society in context. Nigeria, at this particular period of time, is not ideal place for protest until we put in certain uh, measures, like increasing the number of police, training them on how to disband mob and protesters. Until that time, for now, we may not get it right. This is not the best world standard, but it is a work in progress. We can still have some level of discussion, collaboration, on how we can train the Nigerian police on how to disband protesters. Well, well Petra Desmond, um, some people have called for reforms. Uh, reforms in the Nigeria police. This uh, is a, a call by some experts or analysts in the country stating that when the hashtag and SARS protest took place in 2020, uh, what the government of the day did then was to change the name from SARS to SWAT, uh, not necessarily changing the police officers themselves or the operations of the unit. However, is just changing the name enough for units of the Nigeria police like SARS that was, that was changed to SWAT? Or is there need for a more holistic approach and a complete overhaul of the operations and standard of uh, operation of the Nigeria police force? Do you think this is a way out? Uh, because of how sensitive this issue of protesters, police, ha, I would want us to just look at it uh, from the ferry fella and then move on to some other issues. But I would like to lend my voice on some of these things. Sincerely speaking, I have a responsibility to millions of Nigerian people that are members of the Nigerian Nexus, and I wouldn't want to appear as if I'm just shielding the government. But the reality is this. You have to give it to the Nigerian police. In the last four years, there have been major improvements in the operation of the Nigerian police. And I also want to appreciate the Nigerian people with good intention that have come out to protest against NSAS. You would have seen 
clearly that there have been a what a distinct changes in the operation of these SWAT, as you may call it, in SARS. The SARS that we used to know are people that are very, very arbitrary, uncontrollable, but the SWAT that we are seeing today, they are tactical in their operation, and they are not for everybody, as it were, then, before the end SARS protest. You will agree with me that the Nigerian police have put in great work to see that they have a special tactical team that will go against some bad elements in the society. For me, I know how SAS operates. SAS does not have fear or regard, even for constituted authority. But the SWAT that I see and I know, I can intercept them, I can question them, and they still give listening ears. So we need to appreciate the work that the federal government and the Inspector General of Police has put in in terms of reforming, even if you call it change of name. But for me, sincerely speaking, Shijoki, if you look at what happened there, their work has been, has been, there have been changes to their operations. Before, you hear killings of SARS, harassment of SARS, harassment of, harassment of the Nigerian people by SARS. We have seen a bitter stopping of people, you know, exploiting people and all that. Those reports are doing good. When you say reforms, Petro Desmond, when you say when you say reforms, the IGP has reformed uh, SARS to SWAT. Now you mentioned that their operations are now completely different. They are now more respectful. They are now more approachable. They are now more interceptable. However, I want to know where former SARS officers laid off and new recruitments made, or was this just an a situation of uh, training and retraining? as it should be exactly there was nothing like laid off let's be sincere to ourselves the members of sas or the official officers that were attached you know all these were policemen don't forget they are all policemen with special trainings to qualify you as a mobile police to qualify you as iot to qualify you as intelligence person to qualify you as sas what happened is that there are some people that are notorious in their operation that were dropped. Those members or officials of SARS that were performing excellently were unpicked. Not just beyond picking them, there were some level of training, serious training. See, you need to, Nigeria needs to start interacting more with the security. Uh, agencies to know what is happening there these guys are trying and we need to give it to them that is not to say that we do not have bad eggs among them the truth is that there was a reform that took place it may not be known to the public they migrated the good officers from SAS to SWAT and they gave them a different orientation a different operation pattern that was completely different from how SAS operated in the past well, let's uh, still talk about uh, some of the mob action that took place, especially uh, during the hashtag NSAS protest, where reports were that policemen were killed. I mean, we saw very harrowing videos of uh, uh, mob action against police officers and uh, some unsuspecting Nigerians who were against the protest at the time. Now, this morning on the Blueprint newspaper, we, we see a headline story that says, Mob action, jungle justice, on police personnel, worry IGP, others probe. This uh, is coming as a result of a police officer also being slain in, in an Edo query attack just... But that is not the focus. Let's focus on protests where police officers are eventually attacked and maimed or even killed. How do we ensure to balance or create a clear distinction between people who are outrightly protesting for what they need from the government and people who, in situations like you rightly mentioned, often hijack the protest and make it violent. Do you think that there can be a common ground to this? Shijuke, uh, this question, I believe you already have us to it. We are talking about a country where over 20 million school children are out of school, a country where about 100 million people are living below 
you know, poverty line. We are talking about a youthful nation where the country's total population is rated at about 75%, and they will grapple with the highest unemployment rate. So it would be, it would be difficult, you know, to distantly or succinctly separate the good guys from the bad guys when you talk about protests. A lot of people have criminal tendencies not because they are born criminal but because of the reality of the economy. They always want to take advantage of situation just to feed their family. If you go to court hearings, you will hear a lot of cases of people who are lured into criminality because of lack of job. Even if you listen to the chorus, there are some people who are member of Boko Haram today, kidnappers today, bandits today, and do, do, and some of their reason is because of lack of job and lack of opportunity to survive. Her. You see, one thing you need to understand is this. Nigeria is very vital. If you put into consideration the indicators I mentioned, lack of jobs, lack of uh, equality, economic equality, lack of social justice, lack of basic amenities by government to the people, instability in policies, injustice by the court. A lot of people are looking for opportunity to revenge against government. And that is why at the Nigerian Nezos, we have always spoke strongly against public protest. There are so many ways to protest. There are so many ways to protest. Better Edu, former Minister of Humanitarian, was hosted out of the ministry due to the widespread protest that took place on the social media. The social media is a great place if we can harmonize our thoughts and come together under one umbrella, we can use it as a strong instrument of protest against bad government, against bad individuals in government and all that. Going for public protest right now, there is no way you will separate the good people with good intention from the bad guys. The bad guys are always praying for protest so they can move up rights, so they can loot government institutions, so they can loot private homes and enrich themselves. So, for me, the best way, to answer your question, the best way is to employ more people from the streets. Give them opportunities in entrepreneurship, in agropreneurship, in empowerment, in skill acquisition, in exchange programs, in scholarship. That is the best way to separate the bad guys from the good guys. But if you continue to have the good Nigerians, employed Nigerians, unemployed Nigerians, frustrated Nigerians, unregulated Nigerians, to go out there to protest, whether you like it or not, there will be many, there will be killing of Nigerian police, there will be killing of innocent lives, and there will be looting of properties and destruction of assets. Well, well Petro Desmond, uh, you have uh, quite beautifully captured this situation and uh, perhaps profiled a possible solution to it, uh, one of which you mentioned, mentioned interestingly, is uh, uh, the offering of scholarships, especially to young people. Uh, Nigeria currently has about 20 million out of school children and former president, President uh, Chief Gono Basenjo, uh, recently said that Nigeria is raising future Boko Haram members due to this mm -hmm. disturbing figure of 20 million out of school children. He made the statement in Bauchi uh, recently when, where he went to commission a project. Let's talk about that issue. How much of a very disturbing situation are we looking at where in a country of a little over 200 million people 20 million children are out of school well you know it was somebody a pastor who said do what i say and do not do what i do don't follow my lifestyle but follow what I preach. That is a case of hypocrisy. And that has gone too far in our society. Uh, why the call by ex-president Olusegun of Basenjo is timely? 
is apt. I will want our passenger, the original one passenger, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, now head of statesman, who has been lending his voice to some of this issue. What the ex-president captured is the reality. It is the reality. There are more than 20 million Nigerians that are out of school. And they are potential, they can be potentially, you know, recruited into Boko Haram uh, group into or some, other, other terrorist organizations. It's not limited to Boko Haram alone. To Togri, to good boys on the streets, instrument of destruction by politicians and still and uh, become criminals. But the point I want to establish that is a concern to me is that we have so many strong and powerful individuals that looks like they are bigger than even governments. For example, head president Olusha Gwapasunjo is one of the powerful Nigerians. Out of the 20 million Nigerian people, the Otafa, which was supposed to be a government and a federal government institution to feed the nation, now converted into other farm for private uh, aggrandizement, can still, if managed by the federal government, can still employ more than 1 million people out of the 20 million out of school. The proceeds from other farm can still be shunned, if managed by the public, to bring about 5 million of these 20 million out of school, back to school offer scholarship and the rest of them. So when the ex president speaks with this tune of patriotism, he should also act in line with what he has spoken about by leading by example. He has so many assets, and it's not just him. I'm sorry if I mentioned his name today, but there are so many big, big ex presidents, ex governors, ex senators. Head DG of one government organization or the other, they have access to unimaginable wealth that they cannot even finish in their lifetime. They can do well, be more patriotic by channeling this wealth for public goods instead of for self aggrandizement. So I want to appreciate Olusha Gobasanjo for making that call and also want to appeal to him to see that since Otafa is more or less like a public asset. He can bring on board more Nigerian people to see to it and see how that Otafam can benefit millions of Nigerians. Well, well, it's uh, let's hope that uh, the elder statesman is perhaps listening or what some of his aides are. I believe uh, when the message is relayed to him, he will say and uh, do the do and not just talk the talk now let's uh, get to more serious issues especially with the out of school children uh he this statement in bauchi state and of course bauchi uh being in the northeastern part of the country is one of uh, the states that has the most number of out of school children uh, as marjorie children i might add now during the uh, regime of the former president good luck dr good luck abele jonathan a had uh, what was known as the Almajri uh, School, uh, Almajri Children's School or thereabouts, which is currently not functioning. Do you think that that sort of initiative where the Almajri children are inculcated into a school system is sort of sustainable and could be revisited? Or do, should the Bauchi state government be more concerned about getting these children off the streets and getting them in proper Western schools or Western education uh, style of schools? Uh, one of the greatest initiatives of government in the recent time is that at the Marjorie school uh, system. You see, you need to understand that the north not like every other zones or part of nigeria they are people whose culture has married strongly into religion and then you cannot take religion 
out of the culture in the modern part of Nigeria. And that is why there needs to be better censoring to these clerics, Islamic uh, uh, Islamic uh, teachers, and all that in the northern part of Nigeria. So, because of teachings of extremism and some wrong teachings by some of these Islamic clerics, that was the reason, the main reason why the NSA, as at that time, <laughs> advised President Gulok Ebele Jonathan that the best thing you can do for towards re, re, re radicalization of some northern youth is to have the Almajiri school system. And good luck, a Billy Jonathan did well by establishing that institution. But I tell you sincerely, since 2015, that Good ex president, good luck, a Billy Jonathan left Asso Rock. There had not been serious attention on the Almajiri school system. And that Almajiri school system is actually a blessing to the country because it targets this Almajiri that wanders about in the streets. And majority of the northern people at that time still have issues with Western education. So the best way to bridge that ideology is to have a school system that still incorporates religion into the teachings and some level of what? Enlightenment that can bring about positive or contribute to national growth and development. Ever since the era of uh, good luck of Billy Jonathan, we have not had serious engagement, and I think it's about time that the federal government refuses the Almajiri school system with better vigor and better motivation to see that the Almajiri school system recruits more number of people back to school. And that just to be extended to also young adults and women. Well, certainly a very fantastic take there, uh, Petra Desmond. Let's uh, turn our attention to some other issues, especially uh, the CNG conversion situation in the country with the ever skyrocketing fuel prices, uh, where in Lagos now reports say that uh, a litre of petrol is currently selling at 1,019 naira, where marketers have again pushed the price up. Drivers are calling on the federal government to create infrastructures for refueling stations. Uh, mind you, many people have complained in the past uh, couple of weeks or even months of having trouble converting their cars from, uh, from petrol to CNG uh, cars. Uh, how much of uh, progress do you think the Nigerian government is doing with regards to this? And what more needs to be done to ensure that uh, every Nigerian gets access to to the CNG conversion? First, first of all, when the issue of petrol, PMS, is being raised or mentioned, CJK, I tell you sincerely, my heart bleeds. Because the mess that we are going through today as a nation is because of mismanagement of our oil sector, inclusive of the PMOs. The NNPC as an institution has done this country a lot of disservice. Nigeria, a country with great assets, such as refineries to refine petrol for our citizens, for so many years, despite interventions and billions of dollars invested in overhaul maintenance of our refineries, still couldn't work and nobody is saying anything. But let me take my mind away from that because I've spoken so much about this square and my heart bleeds anytime it's being mentioned. Now, let me tell you, let's first of all appreciate President Paula Metunubu for this initiative, this presidential CNG initiatives. It is a good one because Nigeria have deposits of 
unlimited natural gases that have been fled for more than 30 years, wasted. It is a good thing that the president thinks of converting this waste into asset for the country and even the sustainability of the ecosystem. But don't forget that there was a project that was signed by President Momodou Buhari in 2020 between the federal government and the Chinese company. They call it KKK Pipeline Project. This KKK Pipe Project was supposed to be the backbone for CNG infrastructure in Nigeria. For complete four years, that project was abandoned due to lack of leadership and lack of what? Interest in the masses. That project was what? It is not a complete fault of the government. I don't want to go into that project. There are some state governments, there are some kings, traditional rulers, there are some community leaders that stood strong against the federal government and the Chinese company that was supposed to lay this pipe for some, I don't want to go into details, but because there is no real power by both the government and the people, you find out that that project was stopped. And that is why they have been delayed in putting these infrastructures in different states of the country. This pipeline was supposed to run from the south-south down to northwest in Kano. That's why it's a KKK project. Now, what you, you need to understand is that infrastructure is not like fuel station. A CNG infrastructure is one CNG conversion or one CNG station. The resources, you can use it to build more than 10, 10 filling stations or even 15 filling stations. Let me just take Nigeria through the process. Now, because we do not have a pipeline that supplies these CNG gases from where, maybe from, from Cross River State, Aquiban State, from River State, or from Delta State, down to, or from even Lagos State, down to, you know, maybe all the points. So what they now use now is to set up a station. And they now convey, they now use trucks. There are special trucks used in conveying CNG gases. They call them cascades. These cascades are not even, they are compressed gas. They are not like the normal cooking gas and the petrol or the diesel. So they have a special instrument that they use and the vehicles or the truck that carries them, they call them cascades. Now, it's beyond building a station. You need to have a station to have at least minimum of five cascades. You can, after this interview, you should just Google the cost of one cascade. Not like the regular Dangote with uh, Dangote truck. They are very expensive. They are highly, highly efficient machines and they cost a lot of money. And the reason why the government or the country investments, investors are now going for more cascades or trying to get more cascades is because the infrastructures are not still there. There will even be more troubles for CNG car users very soon. Because right now in Abuja, what used to be maybe 500 CNG cars, we now have thousands of CNG cars. And, 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 and why, 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 do you think there will, why do you think there will be some sort of trouble? I mean, it's, it's an initiative. No, that's what I'm saying. Okay. We have only three stations in Abuja. We have one in Kugwa. We have one in Goza, and one that was commissioned by this government in Jabi. Now, the one commissioned by the government because of lack of cascades cannot is not operational. There are only two operational CNG stations in Abuja now: the one in Kugwa and the one in Goza in Alonga Patrol. And these are private owned by Nipco Company, Nipco Group of Company. Now, what that means is that there will be more pressure. More pressure by motorists that want to refuel their CNG. Some people will be frustrated because of the long queue. Right now, the CNG queue was minimal before, but today 
is extreme because there is so much pressure. More cars have been converted without bringing up infrastructure for the refueling of this CNG. For example, if you go to Bovas, Bovas in Solstice Junction, you find that, that Bovas also convert thousands of vehicles, but yet still have not delivered a CNG station. So these are why a lot of people will be facing more troubles, hardship in getting these gases. And uh, if you, what is the essence of converting these cars when there are no more CNG stations? So what we should talk more about now is how can federal government, private sector, bring aboard more CNG station, refueling station, than just mere converting these cars and cause more problem for motorists. All right. Well, uh, Honorable Desmond, uh, we have just a couple of minutes to wrap up this uh, conversation with you, but I just want to get your thoughts on just one more issue before I let you go. Uh, the federal government has uh, strictly warned that there will be no room for succession. Now, if you recall, last sometime uh, last week, uh, Sunday Woho was reported to have, uh, you know, render the petition to the United Kingdom uh, for the actualization of the Yoruba nation or Dudua uh, Republic. Uh, wh what do you make of this development? And uh, do you think that the federal government is perhaps uh, or perhaps needs to put more stringent measures to ensure that talks of succession don't even spring up in the country? In just a few minutes before we go. Um, why uh, the government's have the right to say that there will be no room for cessation in the country. It is also important for the government to be responsible enough to put in measures that will ensure that people do not call for cessation. Government needs to be more responsible. Beyond being responsible, government needs to be more responsive and government needs to improve on their core value, the national core value of unity, patriotism, equity, equality, and fairness to all sections of this country, either the North, the Northeast, the North Central, the Southeast, the Southwest. Every part of the country needs to have a fair share of dividends of democracy. The Federal Character Commission needs to be needs to up their game. The National Assembly needs to up their game. Government needs to be for them. If you do not want people to call for secession, then we need to inculcate this value of injustice to one is injustice to all. Justice for one is justice for all. Why the people calling for secession are being unreasonable? Because there are more measures, measures in Nigeria today, from the south south to the north east. Nigerians are connected in so many ways. Some people who are calling for secession today, some of them are just using it to exploit international donors. Some of them are using it to exploit their gullible members. We are not supposed to be talking about secession in 2024. Yes, it is fair and fine. If you talk about decentralization of certain powers of government, and if you call for what they call true federalism, it is it is it makes sense. It makes it makes political and economic sense. But calling for secession right now, where there are more measures in our religion, more measures in our culture, more nessus in our economic, more nessus of marriages and all that. So we need to be fair as a citizen, as people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, that Nigeria is not working as expected, not because the country does not have the capacity to work, but because a lot of people are not working individually towards the growth and development of the country. Therefore, government needs to seek up to understand those lines, set up commissions, and ensure that they are strengthened. 
to increase awareness and sensitization for national unity and integration. The National Orientation Agency, beyond being set up, needs to be given priority to work on measures and activities and programs to see that more people understand our collective and our national vision and run with it. The Ministry of Justice needs to ensure that all the agencies under its covers work towards ensuring that there is what they call justice for one and justice for all. Beyond that, our fiscal and our mobilization needs to ensure that budgets are heavily distributed. You can go only from Ghana. Ghana development style is parallel and horizontal. And Nigeria can do something like that to ensure that every region, every zone, every state gets equal share from the national assets. And then nobody will be struggling to be a president of the Eastern Nigerian, a president of Yoruba, the president of Iowa, rather, we have a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that will deliver the dividends of democracy and ensure that every life matter and everyone counts in this country. Well, well, uh, Petro Desmond, we also saw reports recently where the federal government said that uh, the United Kingdom has refuted claims of uh, being in support or having anything to do with the Sunday Waho uh, petition for the Yodudua Republic to the uk uh, what is the place of uh, uh you know foreign countries especially uh former colonial masters like uh the united kingdom in the case of nigeria in ensuring that uh, such succession talks uh, do not spring up or, or even uh, hold water to the point where it becomes a troubling issue for the government of the day uh, the, at a time when uh, the country is already grappling with security challenges and then things like this come up, it's certainly going to destabilize the system. So what is the position of uh, countries like the United Kingdom? Uh, you are you are learned. Uh, and uh, you understand what they call sovereignty. Yeah, Nigeria may be going through up and downs, we may have our own fair share from the instability, global economy, global policies that has affected the quality of our lives as a country. But then, we cannot take it away from Nigeria being a sovereign nation that even the United Nations can only offer ideas, advices. The IMF, International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the Joe Biden, the president of the world, the president of the United States, the president of China, these superpowers. The only thing, the only role they can play is to advise and to sanction through economy. But they do not have the right to grant any group in the country that plea for secession. So what happened between Sunday Igbo and the United Kingdom is a mirage. It's just a caricature. It is just a cloud chasing that does not hold any water. Besides, no country of the world has the power to divide or support anybody under international law. Under international law, there is no country of the world, either America, UK, have even the power to fund any of such move. It is against the international law. Now, one thing I want to say today is that I'm a Yoruba man. There is a popular saying that Ile Latin co that is charity begins at home. You are calling for cessation of the Yoruba nation. In true sense and reality, is the Yoruba nation united? Is the Modakeke and Ife? Is the Eda and Ijebu? Is Oshu and Oyo, are they really united as one? Are we speaking one voice? Are we evenly distributing the resources in the Southwest? Besides, things have changed. There are some groups in the country today that feel they are more powerful, even within groups, even within nations, even within the Yoruba nations. There are some groups within the Yoruba nations 
that feels superior against the old order. So in that kind of situation, you are going to create more problems. You bite more than what you can shoot. So I want to advise Mr. Sunday Igbo, please, he should seek for more knowledge about how nations emerge beyond that and what should be his role towards national growth, national development, and justice for all members of this community. Rather than this calling to destabilize the already fragile peace that we are enjoying in this country. I am not in support of some of the anti-people's policy by governments. I'm not in any way supporting this act of irresponsibility by some officials of government. But that is not to say that because of my dissatisfaction, I should stand today and start making calls for cessation, where I know the end from beginning, that is going to be a move that will plunge us into more internal crisis. So what we should be calling for as Nigerian people today, the likes of Sunday Igbo, the like of Inam Bikanu, the like of Shet Yerima Shetima, the likes of all these people, Asari Dokubo, and all these people. What we should be calling for right now is that there is fairness, there is justice, there is equality, there is response, and there is responsibility by government. And let me say something. Act sincerity, transparency, breach what they call accountability. Government needs to be transparent. Once governance is transparent, it will naturally position accountability. This is what I want us to unite our voices with and see that we call for a more prosperous nation through transparency and accountability, especially when it comes to affairs of governance. All right, um, Petro Desmond, Larry Wajufo, Obi, I must thank you so much uh, for lending your thoughts and deep wealth of knowledge to some of these uh, national issues uh, from the hashtag NSAS Memorial, uh, of course, to uh, the 20 million out of school children and uh, the CNG conversion situation in the country. And finally, uh, Sunday Woho's petition for succession, which uh, you have really knocked hard. And uh, let's hope that the Yoruba nation or the Yoruba community in the country gets united as time progresses because the unity of a people is what makes them stronger. So thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, thank you so much, uh, CJK and ADBN TV for having me this morning. All right, fantastic.